he's the shove it man. <laughs> Okay, today it's the biggest video I could possibly make this month. It's Ring of the Hawk Season 3, and I think the current champion Hamada is under real threat here. She could definitely be toppled by today's challenger. In order for her to be beaten today, we're going to need some fun, exciting matches, good moves, and as long as it isn't boring. And to be honest, today's guy has a beat on the promo front no matter what. She couldn't even speak English. And if you're new around here, Ring of the Hawk is a show on its third season where we watch back a wrestler's short run with a company. It has to be 30 or less matches. Sea shows and weird special events will not be counted. This isn't a history video. This isn't a specific storyline video. It's my first impressions watching back the matches and promos to see if they can do the J.O.B. Watch to the end for the final grade and to see if we have a new champion. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J.O.B. to the H.J.W.K. any night, any day, Ha ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! Okay, it's MLW MJF. I better save my breath. Yes, today it's Maxwell before he was really famous. And FYI, we will not be using hindsight for his final grade. We're just grading what we see today. Nowadays, he's the biggest star AEW have. The Hawk doesn't support a particular wrestling brand, and I'm telling you, he is the only new star created in the whole of wrestling for a while. He's everywhere. Chances are if you haven't watched AEW, you probably still have heard of MJF. If you hate All Elite Wrestling and you disagree with me, that's fine. There's no point trying to argue with me about it, because I don't have an opinion on them. But MJF is a big deal in wrestling. He's probably the only part of AEW I'm up to speed with despite not watching their show. And he's all over the wrestling news. He is genuinely great, and I'm saying that with zero bias towards either company. I am one of the most critical wrestling YouTubers, and I genuinely cannot find anything to really rip into him about. Give him a couple of extra inches. He's a good all-rounder. I will say this one time and one time only. This is not an AEW channel. So if I see that in the comments, shut up or I'll smack you on. This is a channel dedicated to the less talked about things in wrestling. Now that I've got all that out of the way, let the arguments commence in the comments. Now a small bit of backstory. MJF had been wrestling for just over three years, so he's relatively new to wrestling still at this point. The company we're watching today is MLW, Major League Wrestling. I hope Corp Bureau is okay with me using this footage. I've always seen eye to eye with the owner of MLW. So I'll say head over to their YouTube page where they upload full shows each week. It's only an hour show and from what I've seen it's the easiest to watch casually in 2022. So shout out to MLW. They're one of the biggest indie companies in the US and so many stars have come through there. I'm sure you'll be seeing some of that today. Anyway, the company did run for a long time, but then it started back up again in 2017. MJF wrestled there during that year, but we can't count those matches as they're supercard matches. It's the same format I've been using for all Ring of the Hawk episodes, we must have consistency. Sorry for the extra long intro, I am excited for this video and I bet you are too. Let's get into it. Match 1 Well, he seems to be playing the exact same gimmick as in AEW. I thought he'd be different at this point. He even has his scarf. The only thing that's different is everyone refers to him by his full name, so no MJF abbreviations here. The pre-recorded promo before the match is good too. He sounds believable as he threatens his opponent. He takes on Joey Janela with Aria Blake. Well, this is a feud lots of people are going to be familiar with. MJF jumps in before the bell has sounded. It doesn't help and Janela gives him a Luthez press. An uppercut by Jelena now. MJF dumps in his nappy of fear and tells his opponent to relax. He bells from the ring where he's hit with a suicide dive. We head back to the ring where there's a brutal looking bump. MJF throws him out of the ring and he hits straight into the commentary desk. We cut to an advert break and come back just in time to see Janela diving out the ring into Maxwell on a pile of chairs. Janela sends him back into the ring where he connects with the Swanton Bomb for a two count. Dude, I was watching the Major League Wrestling show the other day, man. And this dude, Joey Janela, he stole my Swanton Bomb finishing maneuver, man. But it didn't finish. Man, I'm going back to Carolina. And I'm going to tell my stoner friend Shannon all about you, Janela, man. Janela's pretty popular here in the crowd. He unfortunately takes too long on his next dive and Maxwell makes him fall in his nutsack. Superplex from MJF, but it's just a two. The match starts getting more intense as the fists are flying. MJF beats him down and hits a rope-assisted power driver. Good psychology here. He needed to weaken him to hit a big move. The girl throws a chair in the ring. The dumbass ref is more interested in the girl. How stupid. Maxwell smashes him in the gut with the chair. But wait, what? Seconds later, Janela super kicks the chair into Maxwell's face. That's how it ends. That has to be one of the dumbest endings I've seen in a while. She threw the chair deliberately to MJF and the ref looked at the chair and then completely ignored the next 30 seconds of the match. 
Maxwell dumps this nappy of anger. I know how he feels. A girl in an extra short skirt interviews Maxwell about his loss. MJF calls the referee out for being an idiot. He says that the girl from earlier needs a real man just like him. This causes Janela and Maxwell to fight again. While it's certainly not a boring start, Janela was the one taking all the risks, but Maxwell was a dance partner. He just didn't do that much. It's not his fault the booking was dumb in this match, but the promos before and after were good. Let's give him a B because I do want to see more of this. Very interesting. Another confident promo before the next match. He's playing a rich punk kid. He is Maxwell J. Friedman, and he is better than his opponent. Match 2, Battle Riot. Singles match for the vacant MLW middleweight title. Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Someone in the crowd frantically chants EC2 at him. Yeah, I guess that comparison makes sense at this point. Versus everybody's favourite, Joey Ryan, who's described as the transmittable disease of professional wrestling. As with any Joey Ryan match, there's a lot of messing around before it even starts. He screams Jim Cornette says you're a joke, which starts a fuck Cornette chant in the crowd. The match finally starts with chain wrestling. The crowd want him to touch Joey. MJF says he'll agree to touch it if Joey shakes his hand first. They argue about this for a while till MJF tries a cheap shot. He's then hit with a Joey Ryan dropkick. MJF falls out the ring but cutters Ryan's arm across the ropes as he comes back in and hits a nice hammerlock takedown. MJF's all over his arm like a bad shirt now. Joey eventually hits a pump handle suplex for a double down. It's all Joey Ryan when they get up. He keeps hitting clotheslines. And there it is, the cab driver slam, the cab driver slams, just a two count. Ryan can't capitalise and he has his next move blocked. MJF crashes down across his arm with a double stomp. No idea what he calls this next suplex, but I like it from MJF. It's just a two, but it's impressive. They trade shots until Maxwell spits on Joey. Ryan flips, but he can't catch Maxwell as he shows his athleticism into a thumb into the eyelid. Meeting of the minds now, and MJF stumbles all over the ring for 20 seconds until he collapses into Ryan's nutsack. Joey Ryan, of course, no sells that because it's his gimmick. Now MJF does an inverted atomic drop, which hurts his knee more than Ryan's nutsack. The super kick gets Ryan a two count. Joey pulls out a lolly and puts it in MJF's mouth. Maxwell hides behind the ref and uses this as a chance to do a thumb to the eyelid and the package shoulder breaker while still having the lolly in his mouth and it's the three. Wow, I can't believe I actually liked this match and he won with an arm move whilst working Joey's arm the whole match. And he won a title in his second match and he cuts a scathing promo at the crowd after the match. He calls the short skirt woman a dollar store Oprah. He tells the veterans who told him that one day he'd be a star, newsflash, he already is one. Based on this evidence, he's right. This couldn't have gone oh, any better. Yeah. I loved it as a whole. This is an A. Okay, can't believe the wrestlers and the presentation MLW had in 2018. This feels like a solid number two promotion at this point. Match three, later that same night. Battle Riot match. This is basically a 40-man Royal Rumble match, but pinfalls also count. Pretty good draw for MJF. He enters at number 37. Immediately, Ryan and him start battling. Oh, what the hell, MJF is clotheslined straight up by Tom Lawler within 20 seconds. Well, I guess you can't win them all, sadly it's not. Oh no, my god! Match 4, street fight for the middleweight title, MJF versus Joey Janela, which starts straight away in a corridor. Janela hits him a bunch of times for a one count. Now he chokes MJF with his scarf as he pulls wacky faces. We make it into the crowd where Maxwell catches a Janela dive and dumps him on a bar table, just a one count. Maxwell's distracted playing with the crowd, he gets pushed off a chair. Janela smashes his hand into a chair. He also smashes his face into a chair and super kicks him whilst Maxwell is sat down. MJF starts panicking and uses the manager girl as a human shield. That helps him score a thumb to the eyelid and a back suplex on the ring apron. We're in the ring for the first time. Maxwell scores with a pretty nice short power bomb from the ropes, but the match continues. MJF continues winning. He hits a backbreaker for another two. After an advert break, we see Janela diving with a stomp off the ring apron into a chair that's on Maxwell's face. Some of that's just a two. We're at the entrance ramp now. MJF finds a chance to smack Janela in the slash zone, but he can't hit a power bomb and he gets back body dropped. Janela asks his manager for a kiss, but instead she smacks him with a bottle. Maxwell gets the free. It turns out that the girl did want to be of a real man after all. They share a romantic kiss. She's a modern woman and chose the money. I feel like there's a lesson for you there, fellas. If you look like a geek like Joey Janela and you're poor, someone better looking like Maxwell or the hawk who's rich can come away and take away your girl. It's an Andrew Tate gimmick. The match sucked, it's a D. Match 5, middleweight title match. Okay, so bear with me here. Maxwell is the challenger again because he was stripped of the title due to an injury. He cuts a promo about being in the ECW arena full of white trash. He's angry because he was never beaten for his belt. He takes on the middleweight champion Teddy Hart. This guy looks like he just did a line of cocaine off Sonny Siaki's ass. Teddy wants to shake hands but immediately shoves Maxwell. They both take turns trying to get cheers from the crowd, and Teddy tries to pull down Maxwell's nappy. MJF finally has enough of the shenanigans and hits Teddy from behind. Teddy's sent flying out of the ring. 
Nothing happens out there, but Maxwell kicks the rope as Teddy comes back into the ring. Nice suplex from MJF now, probably the nicest thing we've seen in a couple of matches. It's just a two though. MJF puts a headlock on, which keeps almost getting rolled into a pin. After a very long time, Hart is able to throw him away. Nice move now, Hart stands on Maxwell's back in the corner and switches it into a code red for a two. Teddy Hart smashes him with two knees to the head, followed by knees to his back. Teddy Hart with a beautiful acai moonsault for another two. The match has certainly turned. Hart smashes Maxwell with a big uppercut in the corner. In the opposite corner, Hart is countered and Maxwell stomps on his arm. That enables Maxwell to hit the delayed pile driver off the ropes. Things are really ramping up now. Maxwell has the armbar locked on, it looks like it could be over. Hart keeps rolling him into pinning predicaments. After a long time, Teddy gets his foot on the rope. Maxwell isn't giving up, he puts Teddy on the top rope. Oh no, Teddy Hart wedges him and Hart connects with the Canadian Destroyer. Unfortunately, it also destroys the ref. This is a ref bump. Teddy Hart has hit the hammerlock DDT, but no ref. MJF sneaks under the ring, he comes back of a chair. Teddy kicks him in the slash zone before he can use it. Teddy hits Maxwell in the throat with it, followed by an electric chair into the knees. God, I hate that move, it looks so stupid. Luckily that doesn't end it, but the corkscrew moonsault does. Teddy has won and can go home and do whatever he does in his spare time. After the match, Maxwell and Richard Holiday form an alliance as they attack Hart. Get used to seeing these two together. Best match in a while, but there still wasn't that much here, it's a C from the Hawk. Match 6, MLW tag title match. The challengers are the team known as the Dynasty, Maxwell, Jay Friedman and Richard Holiday. MJF cuts a promo saying that Stu Hart is in hell and the Hart family legacy is being destroyed by Teddy Hart. They take on the champions Davey Boy Smith Jr. and Teddy Hart with Pillman Jr. Lots of heat for this match before the bell is even rung. The Dynasty seems scared and keep hiding out of the ring. Probably shouldn't have cut that promo then, should you? The match finally starts. Teddy Hart immediately smacks MJF hard off the ring apron. Surprisingly, Holiday is isolated for a long time in this match before Maxwell has even got a tag. After a very long time, he makes a blind tag and joins the match for the first time, beheading Teddy Hart from behind. Maxwell spits water all over Bulldog Jr. and the Dynasty used this as an opportunity to put a serious beating on Teddy Hart. MJF continues trying to cheat on the outside, but Smith isn't having it anymore. Hillman Jr. also spits on him. This match is feeling seriously heated. Hart Smith distracts the ref because he's mad about the use of the sharpshooter. Maxwell sneaks in the ring to hit a pile driver on Teddy. MJF applies an abdominal stretch with added leverage from Holiday. He eventually throws Maxwell away. Teddy Hart with a beautiful float over into a Canadian destroyer. No pin is made though because everyone's down. Teddy Hart starts puking in the middle of the ring, but despite the puke, he still makes the tag to Davy Boy. He smashes Friedman with a knee and delivers 10 punches in the corner. Smith is now fighting off both members of the dynasty. Smith throws Holiday on top of MJF in the corner. It's almost over then after a dragon suplex from Davy Boy. Davey just won't give MJF a breather. He hits him with a set-up powerbomb straight after. The pin is broken up. The Hart Foundation are about to win when Hammerstone swarms the ring with a chair. The match is thrown out for DQ. It's a shame because I was starting to enjoy it after a slow start. Hammerstone has also joined the Dynasty. Man, this guy looks so different four years later. The match is a B. I liked how personal it felt. We're going to need some A grades if this run is going to be championship material though. Step it up, Maxwell. Match 7, 39 man battle riot match. MJF draws the number one spot in this match. Let's hope he can do a bit better than the last Rumble match. Oh wow, number two is Dan the Beast Severin. I was not expecting that. It's not looking good for MJF. He's still rocking the classic no frills grey shirt. MJF politely shakes his hand and tries to take a cheap shot. Bad move, it's blocked and Seven gives him a belly to belly. Severin is apparently 61 years old at this point. Now oh, here Dilla Park enters and hits a head scissors on MJF. He also hits a snap slam. MJF seems to be getting smashed by every new man that enters without managing a single move of his own. The ring's filling up and nobody's even been eliminated. Friedman randomly tries a cover on the air wolf, but it's just a two. Severin goes back to pounding on him. Pentagon Jr. enters and he kicks everybody, including MJF. Maxwell's playing a sneaky game here. He tries to cover Phoenix after not doing any of the work himself. Another two. A fat man enters and Friedman manages to bribe him with some money and they are now friends. I'm enjoying the antics of MJF in this match. He makes Fenix fall hard on his nutsack and he knocks Fenix out of the match. Surprising first elimination, but I'll take it, fair play. Pentagon has a problem with that elimination and he starts kicking MJF again. It's almost over for MJF a few minutes later. Severin's bullying him again. There's a double submission hold on MJF, but it's broken up, fortunately, for Maxwell. MJF manages another low-key elimination, this time on Park. Maxwell's still working with his fat friend to beat up an even fatter man. MJF becomes scared of the fat man who's called AC Romero, but he sneakily throws another wrestler into him to keep him distracted. That made me laugh. MJF is constantly trying to steal people's pins in this match. It's very entertaining. 
Barrington Hughes makes AC Romero look like a cardio specialist. Almost every man works together to eliminate the big man, which is technically another elimination for MJF. After a drop kick, Maxwell rolls under the bottom rope, and that's where he's going to stay for a bit. He has extremely good timing as the Contra Unit faction completely crush every man who's left in the ring. When they're done, MJF slowly raises up as the camera shows his happy face. He pins man after man. He eliminates three men. But one man, AC Romero, does manage to kick out. Now Brian Pillman Jr. is here, so things won't be so easy for MJF. They go eye to eye. MJF spits in his eye. Oh, Pillman super kicks him, and MJF's eliminated. What the hell, I thought he was going to go all the way in this match. It certainly felt they were booking him to. The match is won by Le Park for some reason. Look, the fact he didn't win isn't going to take the shine off this match for me. That was probably the best Battle Royal performance we've had on Ring of the Hawk. Six or seven eliminations and he entertained oh, me throughout. Yeah. It's an A. Match 8, MJF with the Dynasty. Wow, did Hammerstone have head reduction surgery or something? He doesn't even look like the same guy. He takes on Brian Pillman Jr. The match starts with Holiday holding Pillman's foot from the outside of the ring, which gives MJF the advantage he needs. It doesn't last and Pillman scores a couple of knockdowns. Holiday trips Pillman, which now causes the ref to kick the Dynasty out of ringside. The match carries on, Pillman with the leapfrog into the dropkick. He keeps going and he pretends he's hitting a corner dropkick, but then he puts the brakes on and instead he slaps MJF. Pillman almost gets a roll up and then he's pushed into the turnbuckle. This has injured his arm and Maxwell takes him down with a shoulder breaker. He's all over the arm and shoulder for a long time now. It's good technical work from MJF. Something new for me now, MJF lifts him up overhead by the arm and throws him overhead. We get a double down after Pillman hits the crossbody. When they get back up, it looks like MJF's in trouble. He's battered all over the ring and hit with the snap slam for a two. MJF uses the ref as a human shield to slow his offense into an eyelid poke into a diving stomp to the arm into a roll up. Just a two. MJF starts arguing with the ref and then he's rolled up by Pillman for the three. When are they going to pull the trigger on MJF? I feel like it's a constant tease. It's a good technical match, a B is fair. Match nine, three on two handicap table match. The Dynasty versus the Hart Foundation. It really doesn't start well for the Dynasty. Bulldog Jr. picks up Teddy and throws him at the Dynasty and then drop kicks them all. They all bail to the outside, but they can't hide there because Teddy Hart crashes them all with a beautiful moonsault. When Teddy Hart gets high, he's liable to do anything. MJF is gone for ages. I've literally no idea where he went. Something else new for me in this match is Teddy Hart of a rope assisted DDT pile driver combination. Poor MJF is back now, but he's power slammed by Davey off the top, straight into a moonsault by Teddy, straight into a diving headbutt by Davey. He is now dead. But for once, the Hawk is wrong and he returns later in the match and he helps the Dynasty hit a really poorly timed spike power driver on Teddy. It doesn't look great. Later, Davey and Hammerstone have a competition to see who can hold a vertical suplex for longer. Hammerstone wins because Holiday breaks it up. This certainly doesn't feel like a tables match. Brian Pillman joins the match who was attacked before this match. He was meant to be in it in the first place. Jesus Christ, Teddy Hart hits a Doomsday Destroyer on MGF. If he wasn't dead before, he certainly is now. So many things in this video I've never seen before in wrestling. Completely out the blue, Hammerstone wins the match with a jackknife powerbomb on Pillman for a table. Maxwell certainly took his oh, licks in this yeah. great match. It's an A. More of this, please. Match 10. MJF with the Dynasty versus Bulldog Hart Smith. Maxwell refuses to join this match for ages, so the Bulldog has to bring him into the match the hard way. Maxwell thinks he's turned it around, but the Bulldog skins the cat and boots him in the head. Moments later, MJF gets a lucky break and starts wrapping the Bulldog's leg around the ring pole. The Dynasty also help him out. Every time the Bulldog gets back to his feet, he gets chop blocked. Time and time again, the ref is distracted, so MJF can choke Davey with the scarf. But it ain't a Burberry one. The Bulldog gets annoyed and chokes him back with the scarf. It's an Inzaguri kick from the Bulldog now. Bulldog Hart Smith with a rare run of offense. He gets a two cat on a middle rope suplex and another pin on a Northern Light suplex. His leg keeps giving out, which is slowing his momentum. The moves continue with a snapping power slam. How is this match still going? Seconds later, Smith connects with a jumping tombstone, followed by a diving headbutt. It should definitely be over, but it's not, because the Dynasty pull Maxwell's leg onto the rope. The Dynasty keep the distractions up. Smith crashes into the corner and Maxwell rolls him up with his feet on the ropes, but no, the ref spots it. Running power slam from Davey, and no, why do they keep having MJF lose? I do have to say, MJF takes some serious damage in all of his matches. It's kind of impressive how stupid his opponents are though. They never pin him. This one's a B. Not much psychology in this match, but Maxwell tried his hardest. Match 11, MLW tag title match, ladder match. The challengers are Holiday and MJF and they take on the champions Teddy Hart and Pillman Jr. This one has the potential to be a bit mad. 
It doesn't take long for this one to turn airborne. Pillman with a powerful crossbody on MJF. Teddy Hart quickly follows it with that dumb power bomb into his knees thing. Have I told you how much I hate that move? The Dynasty fetch a ladder which is promptly baseball slid into their faces. Pillman has no mercy and throws himself on top of them. So does Teddy Hart with the springboard moonsault. Teddy Hart now has his opening to climb the ladder which is lightly shoved over by MJF. Maxwell is scared to climb the ladder. Hope that gimmick isn't going to be a thing in this match. He sends his manager slash girlfriend to climb the ladder. Instead, she tries to dive on Pillman, but she hits Maxwell instead. The Hearts rearrange the ladder now and they send Maxwell into it in the corner. Backstabber on Maxwell, which bounces him into the ladder. They try to catapult him into the ladder of the chair at the same time, but it doesn't look great. Holiday makes it back to help MJF out, who has seemingly now snapped. The Dynasty do a double suplex on Teddy into the ladder. They now argue over who's going to climb the ladder, but Maxwell is in charge and Holiday does it in the end. But Maxwell is dumb and he doesn't watch his partner's back, so Teddy breaks it. His back, I mean. MJF tries to grow a nutsack, but he can't and he's kicked off the ladder. Death Valley driver from Pillman on MJF now. The match keeps going and Pillman does a double cutter across the ropes on the Dynasty. Straight into Teddy doing that DDT pile driver combination off the ropes. But Teddy Hart ain't done. Springboard corkscrew elbow drop on MJF now. These hearts are really bad at trying to win a match. They hit 50 moves and never try to actually win. Here's another example of that now. Maxwell gets a Canadian destroyer and folds up like an accordion in the corner. But they still don't climb the ladder. A board is set up across chairs. Teddy Hart promptly hits some wacky flip dive sent on on top of MJF through the board. After 55 moves, the Hearts finally try to win the match. They can't win though because Hammerstone interferes and buckle bombs Pillman. Davy Boy Smith Jr. has enough of that and he power slams him on a table which doesn't break. Richard Holiday hits Pillman off the ladder with a chair and he retrieves the belt and we've got new tag team champions and the dumbass Hearts only have themselves to blame. It's a hard match to grade because Maxwell didn't really do a lot, he just took a lot. At least he's a champion. MJF is supposed to be scared of heights but he's perfectly happy being hoisted onto Hammerstone's shoulders. I'm giving this one a B. I wish it was an A but there wasn't much on the offence side from Maxwell. I'm still loving these shoot style promos he does before most of his matches. He goes pretty hard at the Alders of the Hart Foundation. Match 12, middleweight title. The challenger is MJF against Teddy Hart with a fat white cat. Yes, we've had this match before, but I'm fine seeing it again. Both guys sarcastically shake hands and raise arms before the match. MJF tries his usual cheap shot, which is blocked and he's given an uppercut. And there's the knee drop special. Teddy seems extra cocky tonight. He wedges MJF between the top and the middle rope. This one might be over already. We've got a hammerlock DDT. No, MJF's girlfriend stops the pin. She flirts with Teddy, who promptly kicks her off the apron. Teddy forces her to sit in a chair, and when he turns around, Maxwell hits the super kick and drops Teddy across the guardrail too. He seems extra energised now. He lawn darts him into the ring pole. What is a lawn dart anyway? Maxwell stupidly tries to get a count out win. Title can't change hands this way, so it's stupid. I think he's forgotten the rules. In the ring now, MJF is choking Teddy with his boot when he sort of dragon screws him into a leg bar. Really cool, but he makes the ropes. The match slows down for a bit, with MJF working Teddy over. It improves with a nice suplex from Maxwell. He does get overzealous in the corner and Teddy is able to hit the code red and a Canadian destroyer. But because it's Teddy Hart, it's not the end of the match and he does a springboard moonsault out of the ring. MJF is revived with a bottle of water and he's back in the ring. Teddy quickly dives into a DDT, yet again no pin. Now it's a springboard corkscrew elbow. Teddy finally makes the pin, which is just a two. His next attempt at a move is countered when Maxwell gets his knees up. Maxwell boots his head into the turnbuckle. Yay, a new move from MJF, it's a crossroads. The pin is not good enough and it's a two. MJF gets him up again and does the pile driver off the ropes again, but again he doesn't pin him well enough. He decides he can't win this match on his own and he tries to use a shoe as a weapon. This distracts the referee and MJF's girlfriend smacks Teddy in the slash zone. Just another two. The ref sends her away and then Teddy wins with a diving Canadian destroyer. Pretty nice, it's a B from the Hawk. Match 13, two out of three falls match for the MLW tag titles. The champions of the dynasty versus Teddy Hart and Bulldog Smith. What on earth is going on with Bulldog's haircut here? As usual, the Hearts get tired of the dynasty hanging around on the outside. Bulldog holds the dynasty still to help assist Teddy to hit the springboard moonsault. The dynasty seem to be in shell shock from the Hearts onslaught. Teddy Hart tries to work on Maxwell's arm, but he keeps rolling away. Teddy switches to a chicken wing instead. MJF makes the ropes, but his ego is feeling damaged. Holiday decides to give it a go instead, but it doesn't go much better for him. The Dynasty decides to hold hands and leave the arena with the hearts given chase. After 20 seconds, Maxwell comes flying out the entrance area. My favourite part of this match here is the do-si-do -si -do spot into an eyelid poke from the Dynasty. I'm sorry, there just isn't much to say. 
That doesn't hurt the hearts who try stereo northern light suplexes for a double two. This double team elbow drop has to end. MJF loses his team's advantage against Teddy Hart. Meeting at the mines for the dynasty now, there isn't much in there. Teddy Hart back body drops MJF into his own partner. It's not looking good. There's another meeting of the mines, but this time in sneaky fashion, Maxwell pushes his own partner from the outside of the ring into a pin. And that is the first fall. Wasn't expecting a fall to end that way. MJF wants to quickly take advantage for the second fall, but he's met by Bulldog Smith gritting his teeth. He's so angry he looks like a bulldog. He points at MJF and says, you. He then no-sells all of his offense and smashes his head into the turnbuckle 10 times, followed by a big one in the opposite corner. Teddy Smith tags in and he hits the Canadian Destroyer, of course, without a pin. Now Teddy gets him again, this time with a diving Canadian Destroyer. And the Springboard Corkscrew Elbow gets him the free. Just one fall left. The third and last fall is last man standing. MJF doesn't look like he's going to last long, so Holiday decides to save his friend. Completely out of the blue, Austin Aries nails heart of a belt on the ring apron and hits a brain buster on there too. After a whole bunch of swearing, Austin Aries leaves. Hart isn't able to make it back to his feet, but Maxwell can, and that's how the match ends. I'm sorry, but I had high hopes for this match, but it was the most boring match I've seen so far. I've reached a conclusion, Maxwell is more fun on his own. When the focus has shifted away from him, it waters him down. Plus, I think I'm just sick of seeing him face the Hart squad at this Shut point. It. It's an S. Match 14 tag title match, the challengers are Lost Parks with some interesting masks here. The champions are of course the Dynasty, they both have a good time with the Mexican strippers. Like many matches, the Dynasty hide on the outside for a while before it can even begin. MJF does what looks like an Eddie Guerrero tribute. Maxwell makes it back to the ring but immediately tags straight out and flips the crowd off. Holiday is losing but the cheap shot from MJF turns the match around. MJF gets the tag for the very first time. They choke and cheat behind the referee's back. This match sucks, it's slow and nothing is happening. Every time I think MJF is about to do something in this one, he does an eyelid poke or something silly like that. They finally do something, a double slingshot suplex into the... A wild slap nuts appears. Sort of. Look, I know it's the Fargo strut, but who doesn't see this and think of slap nuts? The dynasty are busy thrusting at the referee when the tag is made. The Parks take out MJF with a combination Simone drop netbreaker, and they also hit stereo suicide dives out the ring. In a truly nothing match, Richard Holiday wins at the Gutwrench Pass. The worst match I've seen today. They spent more time being goofballs than wrestling. It's an S. Match 15, MLW Superfight Tornado Tag Title Match. The champions, the dynasty. MJF really needs to step up his game. The match quality has slid down. They take on the Von Eriks. We're not hanging around here. MJF is frantically choked with his scarf. As usual, they dump in their nappies and bail. It turns out to be a good decision. MJF throws Marshall into the crowd barrier. MJF also decks him with the ring bell. Then he's powerbombed by Holiday. Well, surely he's dead now. This should resemble a handicap match for the rest of it. Ross Von Eric, the man who's left, fights on by himself. Well, he doesn't really fight. He just mostly kicks out of pins. Double suplex with the Dynasty gets a two. Marshall eventually returns and he takes them out of a double clothesline. They just took too long goofing around. The Von Eriks hit stereo super kicks in the corner and stereo cannonballs. MJF manages to fight out of a claw on the ring apron with a low blow. Holiday hits the superplex into an MJF frog splash, but unfortunately for him, the pin is broken up by a Marshall Von Eric moonsault. They clear Holiday out of the ring, and it's a claw into a back suplex, and just like that, the match ends. Wow, what has happened to the match quality? How does that weak ass finish beat them when Teddy Hart can smash him with 10 nicer moves and still not beat him? Whatever, the belts have changed hands. It wasn't a good match either, it's a D. I can probably answer my own question about his booking though. By this point, AEW had started up and MLW knew that MJF wasn't going to dedicate his time to them anymore. So why book him so strongly anymore? He would be gone soon. You were a guy that didn't have the balls to stay. So go join the elite and get the hell out of our face. Match 16, the only match I've struggled to attain, but there's highlights of it on YouTube, so it will have to do. It's MJF versus his dynasty mate Hammerstone. It's a first round tournament match. MJF thinks he should lie down, but Hammer won't do it. He's too much of a badass and the fight starts. Hammerstone hits drop kicks and hits some wacky dive out the ring into him. Most of the match seems to be MJF working on his abs. Eventually he screws up and gets an overhead belly to belly. There's a nice high impact slam by Hammerstone but it doesn't beat MJF. Maxwell spits on him which is a bad choice because it makes Hammer mad. Hammer starts no selling the kicks and he hits a huge lariat. Holiday distracts the ref but MJF still can't get the roll up win. Then Hammerstone wins it with a set out powerbomb. It looked like a fun match with a personal rivalry and I like the facial expressions in this one. Let's give it a see and move on. Match 17 singles match, MJF with the Dynasty versus Marshall Von Erich. 
An obese referee sends the rest of the dynasty to the back straight away. They do a lock-up spot where they lock up in the ring, roll out of the ring keeping it locked, and roll back in the ring all without breaking. MJF wants to shake hands now, but as you might expect, this isn't going to work, but for the first time, it actually does. I guess the Von Erichs aren't the sharpest knives in the drawer. Suddenly, Marshall wakes up with a couple of arm drags and drop kicks. MJF has to run away. On the outside, Marshall smashes the ring pole and MJF starts aggressively trying to snap his hand off. He's just like an old school heel with his hand stomps. Marshall just can't respond to his hand related offence. Out of nowhere, Marshall powers up and Maxwell's face makes me laugh as he's given a belly to belly for a double down. Von Erich hits a nice clothesline of cannonballs. He also does a nice power slam. Not sure which way this one's going. Marshall looks for the claw so MJF uses the ref as a shield. He locks on an arm by yanking on Marshall's hand. Surely he's gonna tap. No, surprisingly he makes the ropes. As soon as they make it up, Marshall boots him in the face just once to set him up for the moonsault. I thought it was a free, but it's not. The dynasty run back out which almost gets MJF the roll up win. He argues with the ref who looks like he might eat MJF. MJF turns around straight into a claw and he has to tap out, it's over. One of the better matches for a while, I think it helped that less people were here, it's a C. Match 18, tag title match, the challengers, the dynasty, MJF and Holiday, they hide before the match, versus the Von Eriks, the champions. Some girls give the Von Eriks some flowers for some reason, which gives the dynasty the chance to jump them. Holiday uses the flowers as a weapon. Both Von Eriks are launched into the guardrail. Now they have Ross Von Erich isolated in the ring. After 5 minutes, it's finally turned into what you would expect from a tag match. MJF stomps him down in the corner and yet again he does the Fargo strut. Or the slap nut strut, whatever you want to call it. It's frequent tags, but nothing that interesting is happening. You'd think Ross has been smashed with a load of moves, but he hasn't. Ross gives Maxwell a jawbreaker, but he can't manage the tag as Holiday takes Marshall away. Maxwell and Holiday have a double back elbow into a double strut and cringy dance elbow drop. That's something I never want to see again. Finally, we get an actual move from Maxwell. It's just a suplex, but I'll take it. MJF almost squirts blood in his nappy when he's unhappy with the referee's count. It's a rear chin lock from Maxwell now. Man, this match is slow. Ross fights out of it, but he's immediately thrown to the map. Out of nowhere, Ross reverses a double suplex into a double net breaker. The tag is finally made to Marshall. He dumps Maxwell out of the ring like a piece of trash. MJF makes it back to the ring, but he's immediately smashed out of the ring with a double drop kick. Ross Von Erich hits a plancher on top of him. It should be over after a wacky spinning move between Holiday and Marshall from the top. I'm not even sure who that one's supposed to hurt. But no one can make a pin as Maxwell flies with the frog splash. The pin is broken up. Other members of the dynasty try to interfere but they're stopped. Maxwell slowly realises that he's in the ring alone. He tries a handshake which isn't going to work. They put on a claw into the back suplex and that's how this one ends. I wasn't feeling the actual match but the facial expressions Maxwell uses are just top tier. It's a C. Match 19, final match, empty arena, loser leaves town match, MJF versus Mance Warner, a man I've literally never heard of and I'm probably not saying his name properly. MJF spits on him straight away which gets him smacked a few times. MJF manages to respond on the outside of the ring until he has a chair thrown at him. Mance uses a tool on his nutsack. MJF tries to create some space from his opponent, he throws a chair at him. He also throws him into a pile of chairs. It looks pretty fun as he slides along. What's not fun is getting a chair thrown in your face, but it's just a two. They fight up the rafters to an office. There's nothing worth seeing up there. MJF ends up taking a tumble down the arena like something out of old school ECW. That's just a two. Maxwell has a broom now and he chokes his opponent with it. He also strikes a cameraman for some reason. He finds another random man smoking around ringside. MJF takes his cigarette and stubs it out on his bald head. He looks like he's having fun here. If this is an empty arena match, who are all these people? He borrows a phone now and calls a taxi. He shouldn't have bothered as he has a chair thrown at him. His opponent takes the phone and says to cancel the taxi. MJF is almost pinned. We're in the ring for the first time where MJF doesn't have any answers for Mansa's brawling. He tries a kick which is caught and he's thrown backwards. MJF thumbs him in the eye. But now Maxwell is smashed with a headbutt and quickly a lariat and that is the free. Maxwell Jacob Freeman is banished from MLW. Game over. I did enjoy that one. I think I just wanted to see something a bit more different and creative. It's a B. Well, that was certainly interesting. The promos were great. They all felt borderline shoot and he really riled up the crowd with them. Really entertaining stuff. But ultimately, him signing up with AEW damaged his push in MLW. And you can't really blame them for that. Why bother? All this left to do is shove MJF a final grade to see if he can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. His match quality was pretty good for the first half of the video, but it went downhill sometime during the tag team of the Dynasty. 
It seemed he went even more old school and spent 100% of the match cheating and not doing anything that exciting. Maybe that's the point in the hill. Oh, and the promos were really good. It was really set up to take notice stuff. And when I say that, I mean the whole way through the video, and it will be taken into account. The matches seem to average out around a C overall in the end, but I feel like he could have done even more. Let me look at it this way. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Was I entertained? Yes. Was I bored? No. So it has to be a good grade. I'm going to do something slightly controversial here though. Smack me one if you don't like it. I'm going to give him an A. But before you spray into your panties, he's not the new champion. Because whilst he was great, I just didn't have as much fun watching this run as I did with Hamada's. That was genuinely fun throughout. Some of MJF's matches were repetitive and dragged at times, and I stand by this decision. But I hope you all understand now why MJF is so loved in wrestling. If you're an old school fan, how can you not like this guy? He's everything you should want in an old school heel. And if you don't agree with that, I'll take your girl out and send you the bill.